In the name of Allah, the most compassionate, the most merciful. Hello and warm welcome to all of you dear viewers of Marjayat TV. Be with us with our episode of program Marjayat Horizon. Stay tuned, watching news, reports and meetings, all regarding grand jurist Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq Hosseini Shirazi. According to reports published by international organizations, more than 13 million children living in Arab countries in the Middle East have been deprived of their absolute right to education due to the outbreak of insurgency and chaos in these countries. Following this report, Imam Shirazi World Foundation sent out a letter in which it demanded the international community to do his part in helping these innocent children. A newly published report by UNICEF focused attentions of the world onto a hidden yet dimension of the tide of violence that has crossed the Middle East in recent years. The UNICEF report, Education Under Fire, looked at the impact of violence at school children in nine countries, including Syria, Iraq, Yemen, and Libya, where a generation is growing up outside the education system. This report speaks of 40% of children not receiving any appropriate education in their homelands amid violent conflicts by different groups who don't miss a chance in order to destroy their enemies. A while after this report by UNICEF, Imam Shirazi World Foundation also expressed its great concerns for the education crisis in the Middle East and called the international community to the help of the children suffering these conditions. Here comes a letter by this organization. ISWF holds the international community responsible for educational crisis in the Middle East. Military conflicts and insurgency in the Middle East has resulted in the deprivation of more than 13 million children from the right to education and studying, according to reports received by ISWF. According to reports confirmed by UNICEF, the Arab countries have watched 40% of their children losing their right to education and their hopes and dreams destroyed. This is why many of the students in these countries were forced to leave their schools since the outbreak of civil wars and insurgencies. These reports indicated that 2.4 million children in Syria, 3 million children in Iraq, 2 million children in Libya, 3.1 million children in Sudan, and more than 2.9 million children in Yemen were deprived of education. Attacks on educational facilities and the terrorists using these places as bases for their ambushes are the main reasons which has stopped the children from attending schools. Besides holding the governments of these countries responsible for this education crisis, Imam Shiraz World Foundation stated that the international community should also take this moral and legal responsibility in this humanitarian crisis and help the children who have been deprived of the right to education. ISWF demanded the international community to move seriously in stopping the political, economic, and social crisis in the Middle East, especially the widening cultural collapse that hit the region, and to investigate the causes and the repercussions of this collapse. Imam Shirazi World Foundation, Washington, D.C. <laughs> During recent week, the central office of the Grand Ayatollah Shirazi welcomed some groups of Shias and lovers of Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon him, from the city of Isfahan. At the company of these Shias, Sayyid Hussein Shirazi, the respected son of the Grand Ayatollah Shirazi, delivered a lecture and talked about the great value of repentance and piety in leading a good life in both worlds. The Holy Quran has brought about some unique episodes of the people's reaction to its divine verses and then reminded the people of their fallacious notions about their Lord. In one example, the great scholar Sayyid Hussein Shirazi hinted that the people were astonished at two issues according to the Holy Quran, verses 2 and 3 of chapter 50, talks of the people getting astonished why God has elected a man like themselves as his representative and that how would they come to life after they are nothing but dead and dust. In response to these quandaries and questions, God speaks to the people in Quran and reminds them of his attributes as all-knowing and almighty. After referencing to these verses of the Holy Quran, Sayyid Hussein Shirazi, who was addressing a group of Shia Muslims and followers of the Alul Bayt, peace be upon them, from the city of Isfahan, declared that the belief in the Judgment Day and the afterlife is a life-changing idea which promotes our level of understanding and the quality of our lives. Death is one of the few indisputable facts of life, regardless of faith, race, status, and age. We will all die. While the certainty of death is universally accepted, the question of what happens afterwards has been debated throughout history. Islam teaches that one's life doesn't end on earth, rather it is followed by the eternal life of the hereafter. However, and despite its inevitability, we get so absorbed in living that we forget about death, our daily routines, 
the comfort of our homes, and our relationship keep us so busy that we have little time left to ponder over the fleeting nature of this world. The son of the Grand Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq Shirazi continued that this belief can work like signpost which tells us our final destination. The outcome of this belief should emerge in the form of piety and a kind of self-awareness which keeps us from transgressing the laws placed by God Almighty. Once we come to believe in God as the all-wise and knowing then we can appreciate the meaning that all the laws put in place by God follow his embracing and impeccable wisdom. This great scholar also continued that the human beings are given a world full of bounties and joys by their Lord, and there are only a handful of items counted forbidden for the believers for their own benefit. Therefore, all people should keep in mind that the laws of the Lord not only don't serve to limit them, but also pave the way for eternal bliss and happiness. از صبح تا شب کسی بررسی کنه زندگیشو خدا شاهده کل این مساحت به این بزرگ ول می کنیم اومدیم فقط بغل خطای قرمز خدا صبح تا شب هیچ کار نمی کنیم مگه پا روی خط قرمز بزنیم حالا بابا این همه چیز آزاده این همه چیز حلاله نا Finally, Sayyid Hussain Shirazi referred to the three elements of giving, piety, and true faith in the Judgment Day as extremely important and helpful because they lead the people through all obstacles and barriers ahead. The son of the Grand Ayatollah Shirazi also indicated that the main problem with the people is not that they sin, but it is that the people don't repent for their sins and don't plan to make up for them. Sayyid Hussain Shirazi ended his words, saying that an act of worship which is loved the most by Almighty God is the repentance of the sinner and their dedication for compensating their past mistakes. <laughs>
Ultimately, this international human rights organization, Shia Rights Watch, demanded the international community to condemn such terrorist attacks and take serious measures for the prosecution of these terrorists, the perpetrators of these bombings, and other promoters of anti-humanitarian acts. <laughs> Persistence and commitment, as explained by the grand jurist Ayatollah Shirazi, are two essentially important factors which can guarantee the continuance of Islamic movements and activities. While speaking to a Shia businessman from Ukraine, Ayatollah Shirazi referred to the Holy Prophet's lifestyle and counted clemency and patience as other core issues in serving the culture of Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon him. Let's watch this report. Persistence and commitment for spreading the beacons of true Islam are two essential factors which cement the continuance of Islamic activities despite the piles of hardships and barriers. The Grand Ayatollah Shirazi focused attention to these factors while he was speaking to religious activists and tradesmen from Ukraine. The Grand Ayatollah Shirazi encouraged all the Muslims and the followers of Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them, to increase their efforts and works, and never get disappointed. In this regard, the Grand Islamic Authority referred to the hardships and sufferings of the early Muslims and the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon them on the top and indicated that without persistence and commitment of the Holy Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, Islam would have never penetrated into the hearts of the disbelievers. During the first 13 years of his life in Mecca, the Holy Prophet of Islam and his followers faced much persecution. In these years, the Holy Prophet was suffering heavy marginalization and suppressions. His followers were frequently arrested and tortured and situations were exacerbating day by day. All these hateful treatments towards the small community of Muslims did not stop the Prophet of Islam from preaching his merciful message of God Almighty to the disbelievers. <laughs> سنگ اونقدر به بدن پیغمبر خدا دادن که خون جاری شد از سر تا پای پیغمبر خدا میتونستن قهی بودن میتونستن اونها را مقابلی به مثل کنن اما نکرد حتی به خدای تبارک و تعالی حرض کردن خدای تو هم اینا را کیفر و عقوبت نکن تو هم اینا را هدایت کن چه دل پاکیه دشمنی که سنگ بهش میزنه خونی نش میکنه میگه خدا را تو هم عقوبتش نکن تو هم از او بگیرم ما باید از پیغمبر خدا این دل پاک یاد و این را به دنیا معرفی With a brief study and reflection on some verses of the Holy Quran, we can find numerous examples of the Islamic clemency and mercy in this divine book, which is the basis and foundation of this religion. Formation of a powerful Muslim nation from amongst the stubborn and ignorant people, while changing their scattered and spiteful hearts to hearts that are united and kind, was a divine miracle. Therefore, we have not exaggerated if we call bringing the hearts together, uniting the rude and spiteful hearts and seeding affection, benevolence and intimacy among them as one of the most important miracles by Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. <laughs> The al Faradi Strategic Studies Center has held a conference discussing the role of contemporary Islamic banking and the theories of economics by the late Grand Ayatollah Sayyid Muhammad Shirazi. May he rest in peace. This conference, which hosted various characters and academics, also discussed the differences of Islamic banking in theory and practice. Now I invite you to watch this report. Islamic banking from theory to practice by late Grand Ayatollah Said Muhammad Shirazi's economics theory was the title of a specialized conference held by Al Fad Strategic and Study Center. This conference came as the latest session of the center's monthly discussion and hosted different personalities in the fields of economics, sociology, and religion. The participants discussed problems and obstacles encountering Islamic banking both in theory and practice. In memory of the Grand Ayatollah Sayyid Muhammad Shirazi, the al Fraud Strategic and Study Center has held another episode of its monthly sessions in which it discussed and studied Islamic banking in the theory and practice. In the light of this topic, we tried to approach the economic theories of Imam Shirazi may he rest in peace. 
We all are aware of the importance and significance of Islamic economics in our time as the numerous crises, especially in the field of economics, are hitting our world. One of the attendees at this conference proposed the issue of the serious competition between Islamic banks and other trading institutions, especially in Iraq. Islamic banks hold on to a very specific position, defining series of limitations for themselves. And at first glance, this might make it difficult for them to compete with the foreign trading institutions, which use advanced banking techniques and strategies. This brings about the need for speeding the services and perfecting the results. To balance this competition, the Islamic banks should operate under these conditions and work dynamically and swiftly and observe Islamic rules such as the ban on usury and what have you. Other specialists also commented on the topic of this conference, which was held by al Forest Strategic and Study Center. The participants at this conference also discussed other challenges and obstacles in the way of Islamic banking and its serious competition with foreign economic institutions. The topic of Islamic banking, which was discussed at al Forat Center, is an important and a crucial topic at our time. Therefore, there is a need for many discussions, plans and programs at this critical period. After the 2007 financial crisis, the world came to understand that the theories of economics should be reformed, and there is a need to use a new theory which can solve their problems. Years of discussions and publications about Islamic banking and economics, such as the works of the late Gwenza Ayatollah Said Muhammad Shwazi, proved to the world that the Islamic economy is the most progressive and developed financial system ever. <laughs>
And now we're going to watch the most important news all around the world regarding grand jurist Ayatollah Shirazi in the next part of our program, News in Brief. Ayatollah Shirazi opens office in Holy Medina. With Hajj pilgrimage days coming close, the representative office of the Grand Jurist and Islamic Authority Ayatollah Shirazi started its activities and programs in Holy Medina, meetings about religious and missionary topics, hosting representatives of other Islamic authorities, gatherings with religious and cultural figures, and the distribution of religious and cultural booklets among Hajj pilgrims are among the programs by the office. The office of the Grand Ayatollah Shirazi is located in Izyad district in Holy Medina. Imam Shirazi World Foundation warns of the genocide taking place in northern Syria. In a message released by Imam Shirazi World Foundation, the Islamic Center warned of the severe and critical situation in Kafaria and al fuwa the two Shia cities in northern Syria. This message, which addresses the international community, called the blockade on these two cities and the shortage of water, food, and medical facilities as inhuman and disastrous, and demanded all the international organizations to end their silence over the human crisis by the terrorists. Imam Shirazi World Foundation demanded the governments of the regional countries to use their influence and perform their legal responsibility in this critical moment. Indian newspaper publishes verdicts by Ayatollah Shirazi. Husseini Times, an Indian newspaper, has specified some of its columns to publishing the verdicts and the Islamic rulings of the Grand Ayatollah Shirazi. This Shia newspaper started working in last month in India. Ansar Hussein Brigade marks the end of trainings in Holy Karbala. The Voluntary Brigade of Ansar Hussein marked the end of its military and belief training courses in the Holy City of Karbala. The closing ceremony of these courses was held at the presence of Mr. Hashim al Mutairi and some other commanders and political figures. The Al Bayt University hosted this ceremony and the soldiers trained to defend the Holy City of Karbala from the terrorists. The Voluntary Brigade of Ansar Hussein was formed after dash attacks and by the orders of the Grand Ayatollah Shirazi. Funeral Service of Muslim Scholar Aziz Uttar in Istanbul The funeral service of Muslim scholar Aziz Uttar, a prominent Shia scholar in Turkey, was held at the presence of crowds of Shias, religious and cultural figures, and the delegations of the Grand Ayatollah Shirazi's office. The delegation team of the Grand Ayatollah Shirazi's office expressed the heartfelt condolences of the Grand Jurist to the family of this great scholar. Publications of Grand Ayatollah Shirazi distributed at Sayyid Enerjus Seminary a number of the ethical and juridical publications and writings of the Grand Ayatollah Shirazi were distributed among the students of Sayyid Enerji Seminary in the Iraqi city of Mysan. It is noteworthy that this seminary works under the directions of Sheikh Saad al-Diraji and the Grand Ayatollah Shirazi's office in Basra. Ayatollah Shirazi office sends supplies to defenders in Holy Karbala. Eight packages and supplies collected by the Grand Ayatollah Shirazi's office in the holy city of Karbala were distributed among the defenders stationed in Beji area. These supplies consisted of food packages and other facilities for the defenders. Ayatollah Shirazi office in holy Karbala hosts different people. A number of scholars and religious figures as well as various groups of pilgrims of Imam Hussein Holy Shrine reunited at the office of the Grand Ayatollah Shirazi in the holy city of Karbala and met with the officials and members of this office. During the meetings, members of Ayatollah Shirazi office discussed religious, social and cultural issues of Iraq. The pilgrims attending this meeting also listened to the members and officials of the Grand Ayatollah Shirazi's office in the holy city of Karbala. Ayatollah Mudarisi, Sheikh al Budairi, and Sheikh al Samawi were among the guests of Ayatollah Shirazi's office. Members of Ayatollah Shirazi office in Holy Karbala meet a Grand Juris delegation in Syria. During their visit to Syria, members of the Grand Ayatollah Shirazi office met with some representatives of other Grand Jurists and Islamic scholars in the country. During the meeting, both parties discussed the shared world issues as well as social and missionary activities. Guidelines and directives by Grand Ayatollah Shirazi were among the other topics discussed during the meeting. Annaba Cultural Institute holds on the subject of reform in Iraq. The weekly meeting by Annaba Cultural Institute discussed the conditions and procedures regarding reform in the country. In this meeting, which hosted dignitaries and religious activists, social and academic experts, the participants exchanged opinions on the topic. Annaba Cultural Institute is an Islamic center dependent to Ayatollah Shirazi. <laughs> Following the daily meetings of the Grand Jurist Ayatollah Shirazi in recent days, 
a number of scholars, religious, cultural, and social figures, along with different groups of youngsters and the public from all around the world, gathered at Ayatollah Shirazi's central office and gave ear to the words, guidelines, and advices from the grand jurist.
Thank you for watching us. For more information on our daily news about Marjayat, you can visit marjayattv.com and its official web pages on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. May Allah preserve you. Bye for now.